Hello out there! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another round of Change the World. And in the studio, I have R.J. Barker here. Look, there he is. Oh, hey, everybody! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll go. We'll go back to him in just a moment. But I want to just recap what we were talking about: the Change the World Challenge. We prompted you to uh, come up with something from our log line. And I'm blocking it again like I did last week. Look at that. Uh, change the world from our log line, eventually a uh, story synopsis. So we gave you a very basic log line. And what we are looking from you is a story synopsis. So uh, if you uh, have not signed up yet for our challenge, you still can because we're not even opening it up for submissions until uh, next week. So go down here, change the world challenge registration. And uh, if you want to see that log line, you can always go back to last week and you can get a look at that. Um, I can actually bring it up really fast here. Hold on. I just have to go through a few slides because these are other people's log lines. Who cares about that? Uh, don't forget to sign up because there are prizes. Ultimately, we want a brief synopsis of your story. No more than a thousand words. Remember, yes is more. So here was your assignment. It was a world-weary courier takes on one last assignment only to take, only to discover, excuse me, the package they're transporting holds a shocking secret. When a momentary lapse in judgment leaves them stranded in unfamiliar territory, they must fight for survival against the elements and a ruthless organization hell-bent on retrieving the cargo. Yep, so that was your assignment. So if you want to get involved, go ahead and join us. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm having a blast with it. But speaking of having a blast, I have RJ Barker in the studio, and we're going to talk about world building. So hello there, hello. RJ. How are you doing? Hello, I'm I'm really good. Hot. I was just saying to Daniel before we get today, I'm in the UK and it's hot. It's never hot, but it's decided to be. So I'm quite red in the face. I've got a big fan down here that I've turned off so it's not whirring at you. But it might be whirring later on. I love this. I saw the challenge on Facebook today. I thought, what the heck? That's a great idea. That's a great, that's, that's really like every writer, I think, right? Yeah. That's pretty yes. much how you always start. It's like, why not? Yeah. Speaking of which, why not? Uh, what got you started in the writing um, genre or, or a craft as it were? Is this something you've been doing like almost all your life? Or did you discover one day you was like writing? Like, how did this go down? No, no, I was going to be a rock star. <laughs> and I, I, I was quite confident I was going to be a rock star to the point that I didn't finish school. Um, and and I eventually had to realise that I was a terrible musician and I can't sing. And that was when I got in a band that were actually good. And I was like, we would get about four or five years. And eventually I had to say, look, I cannot keep up. Um, I, I'm going to have to go. Um, so they let, let me go. And then they asked me back, which was lovely. And they said, it's not the same without you. And, and I turned up and they went, oh, you know, you said you weren't very good actually you've got a point and I was like, uh, uh, thanks so I left again um I, and I knew I wanted to do something creative because I've, I've always been a creative person I wanted to do things and I've always been a reader a massive reader um poetry and books and whatever get hold of so I thought right I'm gonna I'm gonna write books so I, I started then teaching myself English um again from reading and and then I got really ill which got in the way a bit um, and I got better and I started again <laughs> to teach myself. Um, and eventually I got published with Orbit about six years ago now. But it took 13 years of of me writing. And I didn't do anything like this because I'm really stupid and stubborn. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I have to do it my own way. It's, it's just how my <laughs> mind works. I can't be told what and, and being told what to do is the worst thing for me because I, I'll just stop well I'm not doing it then if you tell me that I'm not going to which is the just counterintuitive thing I guess yeah. it's the opposite of what I want you to do <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah, the absolutely. reverse psychology right um yeah, uh, but... uh, and uh, what was the the first uh, like works that you worked on you know for people who aren't familiar with your career let's take us on a little path of your uh of your writing uh production you know I wrote short stories for a long time because they felt more approachable. And um, I, I made a grand total of $5 in about 12 years from short stories. <laughs> it's um, more than some people. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I kind of thought, right, when I, when I got ill and it became obvious that I wasn't ever going to be well enough to have like a proper nine to five job. So um, 
I, I couldn't do any stupid muck jobs anymore. I thought, right, I've got to have, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to really go for it. So I thought I'd write novels. Um, I, and I'm a, a complete tart when it comes to writing. I have no preferred genre. Um, mm-hmm. I've written, I think my first one was a go at a crime novel. And then I, I've done science fiction and then I did fantasy and then I did a, another crime novel. These were all terrible. And, and were they were they and published? Then, but those were just the ones no, that ended up in your trunk. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 And then, <laughs> for good reason, I guess. Yeah. Well, my, I mean, then, come um, on. Everybody's first novel is usually yeah, it's yeah, like not great. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. No. And 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 then um, I, I kind of everything in in my life has always seemed like it happens in a rather unlikely manner. I, I wrote a short story and I couldn't sell it and I put it on my blog. Um. And if you ever hear people saying, oh, people in publishing aren't, they're not interested in new things or, or you have to know someone to get somewhere, that's a lie. They're always out there and they're always looking. And one of the editors from Galanx read this short story and got in touch with me to say, that's too good to just sit on your blog where no one will read it. Can we put it on the Galanx blog? And I was oh, like, nice. yeah. Well, and then that's he said, nice. got... Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Um, and then he said, <laughs> right. have you got anything that I can read that's longer? And, and I said, yes. And I sent it to him and he hated it. Um, but, but he, he put it to what he said to one of his writers who he thought might like it and they put me in touch with their agent and their agent also hated it but said i clearly had an ability did i have anything else and i'd written a science fiction novel and i sent that to him oh wow and um and he came back and said right i'll sign you up because the first quarter of this book is brilliant and the rest of it is terrible um so we, we kind of rewrote it and then that went and we tried to sell it and it didn't sell in the end, um, <clears throat> which happens. Uh, but while I was doing that, I kind of couldn't write. It's really weird. I, I, I don't know if the experience of being on submission is really strange because you don't know whether you it should is. write another one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, or, well, it's like you nothing. haven't gotten that feedback right, right? So it's yeah. like, I don't want to just keep doing the same thing wrong. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you need either the rejection so you can make adjustments or you need it to be accepted so you know you're doing a good job. It's like you're kind of in status, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it, it didn't sell in the end, but that, that was like being sort of released from the traps. And I wrote mm-hmm. my first published novel, Age of Assassins, in I think six weeks. Oh, it, wow. It was just, yeah, it was, oh, I can do this now. I'm off. And um, and then my agent sacked me, uh, <laughs> in, in a nicer way than that sounds. That's me being <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was downsizing because he 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 was a writer as well, and he didn't have enough okay. time for both of them. And um, he put me in touch with a number of agents, and one of them was a chap called Ed Wilson at Johnson and Alcock. Okay. And um, I, I just instantly got on with him, and he's my agent now, and has been ever since, and he's he's done really well for me. Um, but that that's how we got to Age of Assassins and to where we are now from me deciding at about 15 that I didn't need to go to school anymore, which is a bad choice. I'm just going to say my dad was right. I should have I should have paid attention and I should have gone to university. Um, but but um, I didn't. It all worked out OK in the end. But that's not <laughs> You're right. You're like, yeah. it's a terrible idea. But look at me now. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all right. <laughs> it's like... You know, you you um do not confirm nor deny any sort of endorsement no. of no. higher education. <laughs> yeah. I don't, there's no way my little boy is going to get off with leaving school. They said no. You're going. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm. <laughs> this person said six weeks. What type of coffee do you drink? That's a good <laughs> point. Uh, maybe not specifically that, but like, how do you? How do you how do you write like what's your what's kind of your regiment to crank out something that quickly? Do you like write a lot in a day, or are you kind of like been well, there? Like what do you do for that one? Because mm-hmm. um, because I mentioned being ill before, I kind of had a bit of a, a relapse of my health, and they put me on a course of steroids, um, and that's really helpful because <laughs> because you, you stay up all night. An autocrat does not actually no, enjoy no. using <laughs> drugs to help your writing. But no, yeah. no, no, it doesn't. But. Um, <laughs> I, I can write really quickly. Sometimes a thing just happens because I wrote um it's with my agent at the moment and, and it's a completely different genre. But I wrote a book in, in three weeks. Um that, that was like an eighty thousand word novel. Oh, wow. Um and that and that's sort of starting to editing uh, and and a version that, that I thought was okay to tell my agent. Um, but don't don't get disheartened because yeah. I got the first set of edits back from my agent and it and it just said at the top you wrote this in three weeks and I can tell. 
but um yeah but i i I, I love to write Uh, now do you have like a regular pattern in terms of your writing when you're in a project like that like you set aside a certain time of the day or do you just kind of write all the time or like what is it um for that particular one that that was an aberration because i just wrote sort of constantly for two and a half weeks because i had a really clear idea it worked for me and 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 i could do it sometimes that just happens um and i didn't want to write the novel I was meant to be writing. <laughs> so, so there was there was that. Do you have like but an my... actual project you were supposed to be working on, or yes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah See, I so did. we're back to the whole: if they tell you to do something, you're going to do something. Else. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's the, my next fantasy trilogy, and uh, and I just hated it at that point. And I'd said to my editor, I, I hate this, and she just went, "You do realize you've said that at this point for every book you've ever written." I said, "Oh." Clearly, part of my process then is, is, is just hate, hating what I'm doing. But um, I, I my normal thing is I, I come in here. This this is my front room, um, and I sit over there on the couch, which you are looking at me from at the moment. And <clears throat> I usually start about ten o'clock, mm-hmm. and I aim for between one and two thousand words a day. I'm very lucky that, that I don't have another job. Um, mm-hmm. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I don't do anything else. And I, I couldn't. I, I have friends that work and write, and I couldn't do it. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to. Oh, um, it's I, very I, hard. I'm, yeah, I'm astounded by anyone that does it. Yeah. But um, I am for one or two thousand words. Usually, one thousand words is a minimum I let myself do. And, and even if I don't want to, I don't forget. It, I'll still make myself do it. Um, and but sometimes it's two, two and a half, three thousand words. If it just it's hit it, it works. Like I've been writing, it, 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 I, it's really odd because I'm very exploratory in my writing mm-hmm. and I'm at the end of the second book in a trilogy that's not yet out and I think I've only just actually worked out what I'm writing, which is good because I got my edits yesterday. So I can, <laughs> <laughs> for the you first one. So of those just, edits knowing what you're doing, right? Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I've realised what this is about now. So, so, so yeah, but that habit is a really good thing. I don't agree with write every day because it's not, possible for everybody Uh um but think about it every day you can usually find some time to think about it and and try and get a habit and and 10 words is is something Mm -hmm. that wasn't there before yeah and 100 words is something that wasn't there before so just keep at it i mean you'll get there eventually books are not going anywhere (laughs) <laughs> hey, uh, we're, we're getting some comments so yes you're setting the bar pretty high here in terms of that productivity yes but remember <laughs> he said this is when he's yeah. in the zone right i'm sure there yeah. are other times that you could point to that the productivity is not quite there right <laughs> yeah most of my writer friends consider me a fast writer i, I do write quite quickly mm-hmm. um uh, but but I, I, i'm also i've been doing it for professionally for six years so, so yeah so that, I, i've nothing else to do uh, and and it, it, I do actually write more because because of COVID, and my wife started working from home. So I can't just go and play on the PlayStation Four now because she might wander in and she'll be like, she doesn't mind me playing on the PlayStation Four, but she will be sarcastic. Go, are you working? Yeah, it's like oh, your job again, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> just start to feel self conscious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's research. I mean, the PlayStation counts as research, as far as I mean, I'm sure. concerned. Yeah, they sure. Can. It does. Um, but but um, yes, yeah, so I've written a bit more than that. But I, I love to write. That, that's, yeah. I would and hope I so. wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> suggest doing this if you don't, because right. I, I think, it's I think true. there is a degree of obsession needed to do it. Mm-hmm. Good point. Now you were talking about kind of this. Um, flexible sort of way that you develop your uh, stories and stuff. So uh, we have that kind of uh, question, you know, like what do you do to generate your ideas and how do you know when you have one that kind of captured your imagination enough to like actually go somewhere with? Because obviously we have like a million ideas that come to our mind, but like what do you do to kind of like figure out, okay, that's good enough to proceed at that point? Sometimes it's quite vague. Um, My first book, it was quite vague. I started, I mean, I started with the idea I wanted to write an Agatha Christie style murder mystery in a fantasy world. And I'd seen um, a strip mine Mm -hmm. on the malls. And and that that was sort of really strong in my head. And I had this sort of idea of what if when you use magic, it had that sort of effect. 
and that was the setup for the book that in the books magic sucks the life out of the land and then everything comes from that and it kind of rolls and the world creates itself as i write um with the bone ships <clears throat> which was a, i think a lot more of a complex world because the first the assassin books is quite quite sort of standard and medieval feeling mm -hmm. world um the bone ships are, are love patrick o'brien who wrote master and commander the, the film i don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen it um and i wanted to do something with that and, and an easy way for me to start is um this period of history in our world but x is missing and i took wood out i, I just thought what do you do with ships if, if there's no wood to build them from yeah right um and that first of all why wouldn't there be wood so we, we've got i, I looked at uh, plants you know ferns and, and bamboo that grows incredibly quickly um so you have a world that grows incredibly quickly and then it all dies back and it's no good for big ships um and i was thinking what what do you build them from I thought, well bones because there's a history of using bones for model making and tools mm -hmm. um and, and art and there's actually if you, if you go around naval museums there's lots of ships little ships made of bones that the sailors would make um, yeah. and then I had quite just a clear image of, of rib bones used as, because they're smooth, used as the bottom of a ship. Yeah. And then, of course, you need to scale up what sort of creature you get from that. Right. And, it, and it's massive. So, so so it's okay, they have to be massive dragons. They're, I say sea monsters. Mm -hmm. But my, my publisher immediately went, oh, dragons. <laughs> Fancy. They're, they're dragons yeah. okay, they're, they're dragons and, um so so we got these massive things and then then the world's set and then i, I wanted to do a matriarchy because i'm interested in power and it's an easy way to just flip it mm -hmm. um the amount of people that are very angry that i call ships he in these books i've had some very cross emails um, interesting which I, yeah which i find quite funny because again it's it, the it's the flip right yeah yeah and and also the one of the reasons we call ship she is because there's this idea that the captain is married to their ship mm -hmm. so when you have a matriarchy it, it's the opposite way around um, right and then it's a matter of running with it and just seeing where you end up as you write uh, and i find as i write things snowball mm -hmm. and uh, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah <clears throat> and then this one um we're back to quite vague again and i didn't i wanted a world with no metal mm. Um, I'm trying not to say too much about it, so don't give much away. No, and, okay. <laughs> I, 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 my first book is all moors, and my second book is the sea. And this time, I wanted to do forests. Mm. Um, so, and I love forests, and I love trees. So that's that's good. So that was mostly what was in my mind was was just mm -hmm. really really big trees. So mm -hmm. that that's this is kind of slightly Robin Hoody, I suppose, going in that direction. Okay. Uh, and then it's a matter of just playing about and just seeing what you. You kind of come up with and and mushrooms and squid i like squid so i'm gonna put squid in it but there's no <laughs> seas in this one so it's so funny they're, they're you say of... it's funny you say mushrooms because it's been a bit of an inside joke that we've had these mushroom people that keep coming up because somebody mentioned <laughs> in one of our streams and so so this is funny you mentioned mushrooms like look mushrooms it's just out in the world right now it's part of the uh, part of the zeitgeist <laughs> mushroom. There, there's a really weird thing we've just mentioned that with with ideas uh -huh. and <clears throat> I really believe that it, I like to think of it as they're just floating around and you have to grab them at the right time. But it's probably more that the, the, there's like a, a confluence of things. Cause I watched Prey, the new predator movie yesterday mm. and it is fantastic. I loved it. But ages ago, I thought, right, what two films would I want to have a go at? And they were um, predator mm. and um, Highlander mm. and Prey is so close to what i wrote it's oh, fine. really weird and, and I, i'm not suggesting that happens yeah i'm not suggesting they came and stole it from me um but clearly something happened at a point about five or six years back that that has brought that through in the creative process and there's probably a lot more doing it and, and i kind of love that i think this comes comes in waves so if you get an idea and it's really strong for you i just think you should go for it yeah. i never know if it's good though <laughs> so you just so so it sounds like you were kind of talking about earlier you know don't write if you don't love it it's kind of like you just have that attraction to the idea and it's like that's when you know to pursue it and then 
you it either will work or it won't, but at least you'll be excited enough about it to, to really get yeah. it because you're going to have to. I, I tend to generate a lot of ideas. That, that's the sort of person. I'm always thinking of stuff. And what I, what I actually do is I send my agent a page of ideas and say, oh, which which do you think that sounds good? And, and he'll go, oh, that one and that one. Mm. And I'll uh, okay, then I'll do that one. And that, that tends tends to be it because I'm not, I'm not that fussed about that part of it. I'm, it's the people that I like. Uh, and then the world is created from the people and the way they react. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of a backwards world builder in that. I yeah, do it no, like, that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, one of the people, uh, Ken, had the question. He said, does the world come first or the character arcs? And it sounds like you go more, you have kind of that, that, that what yeah. if, right? What if it's a world that's a little bit different? Yeah. And then you think about how people would react to it. And then you kind of build the rest around it sort of thing. Yeah, and I, I try and know roughly where I'm going at the end. That's really useful to know what, that's what, what my the point I'm aiming at is. And then from then it's it's kind of a journey. And, and I I like to quite have a quite a clear idea of my main characters. I, someone told me a brilliant thing ages ago that um, what does your character want and what do they need? And if those two things yep. are at odds, <laughs> yep. then, then then it works. If they what they want is, is is to be in charge and tell everyone that, that they're the best, but what they really need is a hug. Yep. That, that you, you, there's an amount of sympathy created straight away. Can you understand that? So oh yeah. It's really that. Yeah. Those of you, those of those of you who follow the stream, you're like, yep, you're speaking our language. <laughs> we talk about that sort of stuff. Um, mm. for sure. Yeah. No, it's true. It's one of those things too that I think a lot of writers will do stuff like that instinctively, because you know, you've read a mm. lot and you and you know, oh, a compelling story has these elements without even knowing what the elements are. And then somebody explains it to you and you're like, Oh, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I, th I think a lot of writing and a lot of <clears throat> looking for writing advice and, and and how to do a thing is not so much because you really need that advice. It's searching for the confidence to put yourself in the chair and do it. Mm -hmm. And and that's what matters. That feeling that all right, I could do this now because I, I I'm never going to sit and build a world and and do all that. And I don't understand it, but I've got friends that do it, and they can't start until they've done that. Yeah. Uh, and it's just that difference of finding what works for you. Once right. you find the things that give you the confidence to sit and write, then you're off. Exactly. No, exactly. Um, and in terms of world building, yeah, a lot of people will kind of do it as they go, sort of like you. Um, mm. But at some point, that being said, right, especially if you're doing a series, at some point, you do need to kind of step back and, and kind of reflect on what it is you've done, especially as you move forward, so you don't kind of lose track of, of your rules and things like that. So like, what's kind of, since you do this organically from your mm. From your plot and something like how do you kind of work that out <laughs> uh, yeah you're like well, i don't know like <laughs> yeah, with, with much much mourning about it <laughs> when, when, I, when i wrote the assassin books uh, i kind of i made up the, the main character is taught to fight through dance uh, and each movement has a name and a number mm. uh, and he goes through these mentally as he's doing it and i wrote a book never thinking that I would need to make a note of them all. And, and then you're like book two and you're like, you, you're not good. You've got to go back to those things. You're like, oh, God. Yeah. I have. But one of the greatest things you get as like a traditionally published author is a copy editor. And a copy <laughs> so you editor. Just ping them, right? And be like, so can you give me yeah. a list? <laughs> they make you a list. They, 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 they make you a whole list of your, your characters, what they wear, what color their eyes are, how to spell their name, which I tend to have. In my first versions, I'll have like six or seven different spellings of people's names because I can't decide. Uh, and, and your world. Uh, and this kind of presented to you, which is tremendously useful for someone like yeah. me who's really slack. Um, but for the, the latest thing, which we loosely call the Forsaken, because I can say that because it's out there, I have made a Bible as I've been going through because it's a much more complex world. Yeah. And I, I, it has taken me six books, but I've finally learned that that's a good idea. Um, just to have something to to sort of refer back well, to. Well, somebody probably told you, and you just rejected it as an idea. Yeah, right? like, no, no, I'm not doing that. It's a stupid <laughs> idea. But at the same time, I'm quite good for keeping it in my head. It's mm -hmm. I've got. I don't have anything else to think about. Right. Because that, that's like because uh, basically I'm a stay at home dad really, so I can I have to look after my little boy, and and that's it really. I drive my wife places. So, so my, my, my brain is quite empty. 
<laughs> and I, just, and I just keep a book in it. And I, there you go. It. No, yeah. that's great. Um, so that being said, like moving forward, you know, thinking about it as a Bible or even just what's in your head, how often, like when you're doing a series, right? Because again, like uh, your first book, you 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 kind of come up with the arc of the characters and then you build around it. How often, like when you get to the other books, you find yourself somewhat trapped by your own making like you've established things and you wish that you hadn't like does that happen a lot or do you generally feel like it's pretty smooth and and you you, you like what you 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 created as a ground level if that makes sense i i like what i created as a ground ground level but i also i like it when you run up against things that suddenly you realize you've created a rule where you can't do that and, and because then you have to find a way out yeah and to do the thing you're like in the third of the assassin books, King of Assassins, um, I, I knew nothing apart from where I needed to this book to end up. At. And about three chapters in, I wrote wrote something that went against all the rules I'd set in the previous books. Um, and the sensible thing to do at that point would be to delete it and just carry on. Right. But I, I just sat there for an hour, just thinking, how how can I get around that? And that's moments like that are probably the most interesting for me and the most exciting where you're thinking right what what will do and, and 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 it became the the engine for the entire plot of the book mm -hmm. um I, I don't want to say because of spoilers no no yeah it's okay <laughs> uh, well but it's your book but, you get to decide i don't i yeah. i think we'll, we'll let the audience read it because it sounds cool okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but, um I, also by the time i get to book three I want to do something new because I'm aware that I'm getting more and more constrained and it's mm. less imaginative. Yeah. So th there is that as well. I feel more and more trapped by the sort of yeah. thing. Oh, I can't, I can't do that. I've set these rules. Right. So, so that it's, it's an odd thing, but I, d I wouldn't ever want to do like a 10 book series or anything. Yeah. I, I think it gets really challenging. Yeah. It's like yeah. long television shows and stuff. It gets to the point where the rules start to not matter. Cause they have to just break them mm. all the time. And yeah. stuff like that. You know, they just, they just, yeah. just, just, they just, they'll do, they'll figure out outs of everything. And then you get to the mm. point where it's, it's not itself anymore. It's no, hard. I, 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 I imagine it just gets really frustrating. I feel yeah. really sorry for George Martin because his world is just so massive. And, and yeah. I, I wouldn't want to do that. No. If they came to me and said, do you, do you want to go with a George? I was like, oh, oh no. No. I know. <laughs> no, can you not. imagine Can you imagine if it was like, ah, uh, you know, not that this would happen, but it's like, oh, you need a ghostwriter for this. Mm. It's like, no, that's not my project. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> well, it was like Brandon Sanderson taking over for the Wheel of Time. It was like crazy, like yeah. that, that, the density of that, right? But people, it's, people seem to enjoy it. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. No. Good on him. Yeah, right? <laughs> that yeah. can be your problem. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, we were talking about being trapped. Oh, one thing that I sometimes talk to, uh, I kind of suggest to people when they're world building, is a good question to ask yourself is that kind of like what breaks the world like how do you game the world because often it's kind of like you said that's that's what's mm. interesting right that's like what's interesting in life right it's the person yeah. that does thing the way it's not supposed to be and that can tell you a lot so do you ever like not just organically from the plot but do you ever just like take a step back and and look at what you built and then like okay like what's a way that you could break this just kind of for the fun of it and then you write to that or is it always just organically from the story it's it's entirely organic for me, and, and I, I call it rather pretentiously method writing. No, no, no when, that makes sense. Yeah, when I'm writing, I, I'm in the head of the character, and I'm seeing because I don't necessarily think that, that the creation of a realistic world matters as much about what the world you create is as the way the people within it react to it. Sure, because your world can have anything as long yeah. as the people react to it in a realistic way. Mm -hmm. then, then, then it doesn't really matter. Um, so it, it's more about that for me, and more about how how they're doing it. And if if something comes up that breaks it, then it's just because it might be my subconscious mind getting bored. So let's give you a bit of a challenge, here. right? Yeah. But, well, it's but, back to that whole like doing things the opposite, right? So even that to yourself, yeah. maybe it's like, well, I've set these rules for myself, but I don't want to follow these rules anymore, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but but I also I also quite like I, I'm aware of there's something in the back of my head pushing me because because uh, I'm right at the end of book two now. And if you for reading book one can work out where you're going to be at the end of book two, I will buy you 
an orange juice, maybe <laughs> even two, because <laughs> it wow. quite surprised me. And, and I knew where I was going with it, but, uh-huh. but it's still, I was like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't have seen that for the first book. But it's good. It, it's what, what I enjoy about it. It's like, oh, yeah. I well, shoot. I think that's why a lot of authors work that way, because mm. it is common. Like, you know, you've spoken to, and I know people, I'm a little bit more like this when I do writing, is I like to, I don't like to go where I'm quite vague. I really like to have mm. a plan and think, think things through and everything. And a lot of other people are more, uh, they, uh, George R. R. Martin calls him the gardener type, where it mm. just kind of happens and then they prune, right? Um, I think one of the reasons why people like that is because they can be just as surprised as the readers, right? Because yeah. they're writing and they're like, oh, look at this. Isn't this fun? <laughs> you know? And that's not something I, I've experienced as much because, like, mm. I'll do that when I'm outlining, but I don't have that same kind of thing. I mean, occasionally I'll come up with a better idea than what I'm outlining, mm. but it, I can see with the appeal because that's fun. Yeah. It's almost like you're I mean, the first reader, right? Yeah. All it is really is that my my first draft is a much more detailed outline, and and then I will go yeah. back and and make it good because I don't really refer back to my notes or anything when I write the first draft. I just write what I want to write, mm-hmm. and then I have to go back and, and make it work the right. second time Got through. And then, tap, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not if you could read one of my first drafts, you would just think, how did he ever get published? How did how did that ever happen? People don't have names. It just nearly everyone in it is called Thingy. It's just I can't. <laughs> I well, guys, that. well, that that speaks to some some of your speed, right? And this is something mm. we tell tell our 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 um our writers. You know, your first draft day can be horrific. It's fine. Like you're getting mm. you're you're spitting it out. You're getting your ideas on the paper. And so, like the fact that you're willing to give yourself you know, that freedom to be like, it's okay, it's thingy, it's person, whatever, you know, that's probably really helpful to you, I would think. Mm. I mean, I, that, the, the most useful thing I tell myself every day is what I'm going to write is going to be rubbish. Yeah. Because then I've set a really low bar. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> like, oh, look at that, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if I write one good sentence, I'm like, yeah, I'm a king, I've won, I've done it, done the best thing, so that's, that's quite nice. But Yeah, no, it's true, it's really mm. true. I think... To your point, so many people have seen the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, twentieth, mm. whatever rendition of the thing, and they don't know where that person started, right? Yeah, so yeah. they can only look at where they're starting from yeah. and see it's a, it seems impossible. Yeah, <laughs> just look at this beautiful honed prose, and then the first version, it's like the man did a thing. There was a fight. Okay. There's a fight, Next. right? Yeah. yeah. Somebody died. It was sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. so true. I haven't done it, but I, I'm just because action sequences are really hard to write. Um, yeah. Because they, they, they feel like they're, they're quick and they're, they're fast, but actually you're sat there thinking, oh my God, what, where is that person in this room yeah. compared to that person? Can they see that person? Oh, God. <laughs> and when I write your first draft, I'll just quite often write exciting action sequence and skip it. And then, come back and fill that yeah this is a good point when you're writing you know what are the sort of things that you tag as thingies and are willing to breeze through just to get the creation done like in other words like what level of world building like as you go do you Hmm. force yourself to take a step back and be like okay i've got to really think this through versus just i'll figure it out i'm just going to keep going like Hmm. how do you find that balance right because some things you probably have to kind of sit down and figure out that moment and then some things it's like it'll just make sense eventually you know (laughs) If I'm flying, if I'm writing and I'm just doing it and it feels like fun, then anything can be a thingy. I just won't stop. I would go the animal, yeah, people, the place, whatever. And right. I'm, if I'm not flying, if I'm struggling and it's a day where I'm, I, I'm thinking, God, I've done a lot. And then I look and see that I've done 300 words. Then I'm more likely to refer back to my notes because it probably means something's wrong in my head and I've missed something or, or or I've got something wrong, so I might go back some and just see what I've put. And there's less thingying in that um, because I think that subconscious that's probably just me looking for a bit of assurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's nice to have that, which I've never had before for other books. So it's nice to go back. Oh, look, I can yeah. do that. But if if I'm flying, literally nothing matters apart from getting on there because it, it can all writing is time travel. You can always go back right. and fix it. <laughs> Yeah, right. And it's always it's like, been like that now. It's like in the movies yeah. where it's like, I need that that coin. I'll go back in time and put it. Oh, there it is. That's what you yeah. do. When you're yeah. right. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. And quite often you, you'll find, oh, I think, oh, I need a talking talking goat 
on this page and you'll go back and find oh oh there is there is a talking goat i just forgotten it's there because uh, my subconscious is much better at writing goats than fiction yeah so i love talking goats but <laughs> th there's no goats in, in my my work as a cat it's secondary world and i'm really i get really hung up on putting things that are from this world in it it just does oh, i can't do that it, i don't know why it bothers me but it does it bothers you to have things too similar is that what you're getting at yeah i it, I find it for my own. I can read other stuff and it doesn't bother me at all. Mm. But in my stuff, like I couldn't put coffee in because mm. I, I know the history of coffee and and it came from a long way. How did it get to this place? And and that that's what immediately what starts in my head. And so I, I just don't do it because I know it will slow me down and stop me. I'll start thinking about it. Mm. And, and I don't have horses because horses are our world. Sort of mm -hmm. horse like things mm -hmm. that, that do the job of horses um so it, it's really and it's odd there's a there's a level for everybody and what you get hung up on yeah like, no like it's true because yeah. some people some people like we call them low well it's called mm -hmm. like low fantasy it sounds kind of derogatory but the idea is like it's very mm -hmm. similar to our world but there's like a little twist right there's just a yeah. little bit of it and then there's the more like high fantasy which is more like what you do which is literally like anything goes like mm. you, you may not have whatever air you know like who knows right <laughs> you know like so and, i'm writing that down <laughs> a world air. with no air you like the world yeah. with no something right yeah so, i do it's, it's really feel free really to use it yeah no, <laughs> no, no. It's it flips its way yeah. out there. I, I it love... was wednesday and everyone was dead again <laughs> right uh i love uh one of our uh uh, the outdrafting, the outdrafting. That's mm. what people are talking about because it's like an outline and drafting at the same time. And actually, we have a question yeah. about that. It's like the different. It sounds like outlining, not drafting. The difference. My question is from that: What does uh -huh. it look like when you like finish a first draft? Is it quite lean? Because it's like a lot of writers will start with like way more than they need. And they have to trim back. It sounds like almost like you start with much less than you need and you have to expand. But maybe I'm wrong. My my drafts usually grow. Yeah. Um, on edit, they usually get bigger. Yeah. But they, they're they're definitely not an outline. Okay. Because they're they're too detailed to be. Right. An right. Right. Um, so, like, like we, numbers wise, do you have like kind of a guesstimate of like what do you think percentage wise it is like the first draft versus the way it ends up? Um, I think the the bone ships, one of them, mm -hmm. was one hundred and forty when I finished, and one hundred and sixty published okay so, 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 so it's not that big of a difference i would have thought a lot more than that based on what you were saying so no, it's quite but, um, it's quite detailed <laughs> yeah Dis despite what i say about giving myself permission to write a rubbish um <laughs> what i end up with and i don't know why um well i do know why it, it, i shouldn't say that I, I was i was frightened of coming off as boastful and it's not boastful um what you read is always very close to what I wrote. Mm. There are not mass massive changes. Um, that, there's actually more in the, the next book than I've done in any other ones because um, my editor said, she questioned, I wrote it in first person and she said, are you sure that's the right thing you've done? And I was like, yes, of course I am. I wrote it, it's meant to be <laughs> a first person. And then I woke up the next morning and thought, no, no, you're right. Because she's brilliant as my editor. It should oh, be wow. in third person. So I changed oh, the whole book. That's and rough. Yeah, it's a hundred and eight thousand word book. It's massive. Uh, <laughs> third so, uh, switching from first to third is ill. That's awful. Yeah, but she was right. She was right yeah. in doing it. it. It made sense and it fleshed the world out. And I saw when she did it. But the actual plot, not really changed. Mm -hmm. um, and the Burn Ships books were really quite similar. Um, what well, and so I, and the reason I, the reason I can do that is not because because I'm incredibly talented. It's because I'm incredibly lazy. And I have taught myself to do that. And that is why it took me 13 years to, get to publish a book. Because I, I write quite closely and, and I hate the idea of having to do more work. But that is all subconscious. I, I never think about that when I'm writing it. Mm. And at some point, it's going to trip me up. At some point, I'm going to write something that's rubbish. And I'm going to have to do a lot of work to put it right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and awesome. it's coming. I know it is. It will happen. Right. But, um, but I... 
I've been lucky so far that, that it's all been quite close to what I've finally written. But giving yourself permission to, to be rubbish at the start is really freeing. It is. And, and, and I think a lot of a lot of the struggle in writing it is having an expectation of what right. you're going to do. Right. Rather than just letting yourself free and, and go, because it's all up here. It's, it's, it's yeah. in your subconscious. It's that you know how to do it. You've just got to get it out there onto the page. Yeah, of course. Um, mm. How do you find your main character's voice? So you said a big thing that draws you is that that person, right? And I guess the reaction to the world, that, that kind of what-if scenario you set up is kind of how you build it, right? So how do you get yeah. to the point where you really feel like you've kind of mastered them as a personality? Uh, magic. <laughs> it's like one of those things you just do, right? It's like, how do you yeah. answer that question, right? Yeah, it just drops into your head. I mean, <clears throat> Girton in, in the Assassin books, he's probably quite close to my voice as, as a young person. Um, <clears throat> and I hate the phrase Mary Sue because that, that's not not what he is at all. But voice wise and the way he reacts to things, he uh -huh. reacts the way I, I would have done at a younger age. And then Joron in, in the um, the Bone Chips is a bit different because the voice of those books is not the character's voice. It's um, it, it it's a narrative voice for the books. It's quite lyrical and repetitive and and. So it's not his voice. I, I started those books. One of the things in my head was that this is a story being told to you. You've met someone and they're, and they're telling you this story. And I wanted to, to have that kind of air of the sea and repetition. And, and I actually thought about that quite a lot to the point. You have to submit. When you're selling a book, there's two ways of doing it. Um, you can either write the book and give it to your editor as a written book and say, this, do you want yeah. to buy my book that I've spent ages, which is usually your first one starts like that. Right. And then your second one, you can do that, or third or whatever. You can do that, or you, you can put in a pitch, yeah, um, a synopsis and, and a rough right. idea of the characters in the world, which is what we did with the Bone Ships. Uh, and I, I, I wrote a, like a four-page poem in, in the voice of the Bone Ships, and that was how we sold it to, to my editor, Jenny. She loved it. So... The books carried that on and that was there from the start mm. i've never actually thought about it you said it that, that the voice yeah is, is part it's a character in the book is the voice itself some people really don't like it but i always think that's good thank you no it is good i mean yeah. i always tell people if nobody's hating anything you're doing then it's just very bland right like that means nobody yeah. loves what you're doing right because yeah it's like it's like a strong flavor you know some food or something there's always somebody who hates it but then there's other people who it's their favorite thing. yeah and then then the the character in the new thing, um, I wanted to write someone different to the ones I'd done before. They're sort of younger, so I wanted to write somebody older and quite world weary and cynical because the world felt feels quite weary and cynical at the moment. Um, <laughs> and and I knew I knew one thing about him that I can't tell you because my editor will hunt me down and shoot me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't that, want that. So yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well. I mean, you'd probably be all right for a bit because she'll wait for me to finish the trilogy, I imagine, and then she'll shoot me. But um, knowing this one thing about him really sculpts his character. Mm -hmm. and that was that's a good way of doing it. If you know, like a deep dark secret, or, right? Or, or their their deep longing, or the thing they missed, or the thing they didn't do. It's, it's a really good way to sort of build someone around a trauma of some sort yeah no it makes sense mm -hmm. now <clears throat> you've mentioned a lot about you know with your world building and with your character building things like that really being fascinated with the the person and how they're reacting mm -hmm. to things and and all that was that something that you feel like you've just kind of learned through just observation or have you actually like dabbled in like reading about psychology or talking to people or things like that like you know how did you kind of I build that I love people, mm -hmm. and and because cause this goes back to leaving school far earlier than I should. Right. <laughs> and also me being a bit slack and lazy. I've done a lot of jobs, oh. um, uh, ever for very long. <laughs> well, I mean, that gives you a lot of different cultural groups yeah. to learn about, right? <laughs> yeah, but also, I, I, I went to drama school when I was quite young. So, oh. and, and I think acting is, is something quite useful because it teaches mm -hmm. you to be somebody else. Right. Um, and the act of reading is to be somebody else. And and I kind of I really like first person books. And I know I know a good first person book when I pick it up and I feel a disconnect because 
it's not the way I think. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that I search out. Yeah. And and I love that. But I, I think a degree of empathy, which most, most of us have, allows you to put yourself into the, the shoes of almost anybody. And, and that, that's a really useful thing. I mean, I've read bits and bobs of psychology, but not in any... I, I'm interested in everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it sounds like it. Uh, and yeah, good at great. almost nothing apart from writing books. That's yeah. uh, that's the only thing I can do. <laughs> so, so be interested in stuff and people and listen to them. People have amazing things to say. And you can steal from everybody you meet. And just think, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm putting, putting you in. Anyway, <laughs> in this way. I'll change your name because I don't want to be sued, but you're going to my book. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome now in terms of writing uh do you have authors that are specifically like some of your biggest in- influences especially when starting out and she was wondering too has that changed you know as an artist like to where now you have different people influencing you yeah there are loads of authors um the i, I do a podcast called writopolis where i'm um, and a couple of other um, authors we get guests on talk and one of the questions we ask is is what my friend kit calls an ur text which are what are those texts that you hit at just the right age that right. they influence everything um, um richard adams watership down is mm-hmm. is one that just blew me away. and i still read that quite regularly because it it it's, it changes he 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 hit, always said it was just a book for kids but i, I think he he um he doesn't give it enough credit. It changes every time I read it and I see more in it. I love that book. Um, the Chronicles of More Game by C.J. Cherry, which are brilliant, brilliant fantasy books and influenced me to a degree that I think <clears throat> um, you have Gert and Emmaus and... No, you don't. Yeah. Gert and Merrilla and Jared and Emmaus. <laughs> I just crossed them over. They all marvel. Um, uh, a kind of me playing with what CJ Cherry did in the Chronicles of Morgane with uh, Vanya and Morgane. Um, and, and they're superb books. And then uh, there's a crime author called um, Robert Grace, who um, is a book called Alley Requiem, where he does a really clever thing with point of view that kind of blew my mind when I read it. I was like, oh, that's clever. You can play with this stuff more than I thought. Um, <laughs> That's always then, fun, right? When you read something, yeah. you're like, oh, I can do that. That's cool. <laughs> wow, yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> and those books are always there, and they will always be with me. Um, and, and then later, I, I'm, I'm influenced by games, and I'm influenced by television, and because it's all stories, all of it, mm-hmm. and anything has a story in it. Um, James Lee Burke, the crime writer, writes the most beautiful, beautiful prose of any or it's astounding and, and his books are they're kind of like a gathering storm and then this pressure building and, and I, I love that and, and i kind of aspire to be that good one day um and who else there's loads of them it's um it's constant you're influenced by everything everything you yeah read. right no, but I, I don't i don't do you, a lot so of speaking of that being like infl- do you ever like kind of control your diet when you're in the middle of a project because you don't want to be influenced by something like do you because i know some artists do that they'll like deliberately not read or expose themselves to certain things while they're in a certain zone because they're worried about the influence is that is that something you ever concern yourself with i don't really read much fantasy at all anymore because i i kind of i'm not worried about somebody else's voices intruding because my my authorial voice is very strong mostly because i don't know how to write any other way it's not there's nothing <laughs> clever about it or planned. Right. it's just the only thing i can do um but i do worry about stealing ideas mm-hmm. which i shouldn't because we all do it and, right. and constantly and that that's how you how you write you kind of you fold in stuff that you've come across yeah. but um but i tend to read out of genre more i read a lot of crime a big big crime reader and a lot of science fiction and I've just finished um, oh God, Artifact Space by Miles Cameron. It's a stunning science fiction book. Hugely jealous of it. I wish I'd written it. <laughs> it's always hard, right, when you're an artist, because on the one hand, you're so impressed when people do a great job in a way that other people can't be because you know what mm. it takes to do it. And on the other hand, it's like you hate it. Like So it's like you can't really yeah. enjoy it anymore. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> so I, I, I'm really good friends with Adrian Tchaikovsky. And, and his books are just so good. 
that I uh-huh. do. We go for dinner and I just sit there going, I just hate you so much, Adrian. <laughs> I could barely get this food down for choking on my, my hatred of how good you are. It's, it's, just, it's offensive. Can you please write something terrible? Just just for me. Just one terrible book. That's all I want. That's awesome. And he won't. It's just, very, <laughs> just rude. All right. Um, we have some more, like, business-related questions. So, like – what was specifically your strategy of getting published? How did you make that work? Did you just submit a lot? Like, was there anything else besides that? <laughs> no strategy whatsoever. Yeah. I, I've never had a strategy in my entire life. It, it's just not <laughs> how I work. So um, strategy is no strategy. Yeah, I blundered into it through through um through through that editor at Galonks picking up a short story. Yeah. But if that hadn't happened, I would probably still be looking for an agent. I, yeah. I think I submitted three or four times to different agents. Okay. With years between each submission, just because. Yeah. So you didn't submit very much. No. Yeah. No, but my my life has been a succession of weird coincidences, which is why yeah. I say don't 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 do it the way I do it. Um, <laughs> That's usually what everybody yeah. says. Though. They're like, I know how I got into publishing, but you can never do it that way. So because there's <laughs> yeah. an a way, there's always. Yeah. No. Way. But I t- I can definitely see the advantage of of going to conventions and getting to know um, yeah. agents because. Mm-hmm. It, it can't hurt you. It will not give you being friends with an agent won't make them more likely to take your book on. Right. But it might make them pick you out the pile earlier to have mm-hmm. a look at it. Yeah. Um, which which is really useful. But there there is Anything no to give a little bit of advantage. Yeah. And and, and there's an enormous amount of luck involved. Mm-hmm. People don't don't want to admit that. But there yeah. really is. And oh sure. And you, you can't control that. But um, I was told a very good thing that the longer you do it and the better you get, the smaller the pool of people of that ability gets. And yes. the more likely it is that you'll be lucky. Yeah, um, right. But it, it's about not quitting, really. Yeah. Uh, and I'm stubborn. As, I mean, I'm easy going, but I'm really stubborn. There uh, you go. And I just won't, won't give up. <laughs> now, more uh, kind of business ways. What are some things you've done to build your readership? You mentioned your blog, you know. What kind of things do you do and what do you feel like which is rewarding, which one has it been in terms of like kind of the marketing side? Because even a published mm. author, people are surprised to learn. They have to do a lot of their own self-promoting. Yeah. Well, I do whatever my publisher sends me. If they send me a thing and say, will you go to this? And then I do it. Um, <clears throat> I'm on Twitter all the time. I, just, I like it. I was on Twitter before I was an author. Um, mm. and, and it works for me because I can just be like flippant and short yeah. and, and, and that's good because because i'm i'm quite tall but, but short short works in writing wise uh, and and i can i don't know if you, if you do you do the pomodoro technique yeah well yeah um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like lots of um distractions when i'm writing it works for me i usually have right. the television on which appalls half my writer friends i i'll sit and watch like yeah. mark because i don't really care about marvel stuff so i'll put it on the television so i can be aware of it <laughs> but I'm writing at the same time. So yeah. it was, doesn't take your full um, attention. Right? Yeah, but Twitter's perfect for that because you can just drop it in and out. Um, as soon as I got published, I started going to conventions. And if there is a panel that wants me to sit on it, I'll sit on it and do it. And I'll go to bookshops. Um, I know ne- I've never thought of any of this as as marketing. There's been no sort of strategy. Um, I like talking to people, and. And that, that's a huge advantage. Yeah. I find stuff like this fun. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a really good reader. If somebody reads, if you see me read from my book, you won't, you'll remember it. I'm good at that. Okay. And that's probably a skill worth having. Because mm. if you, if you go and do That's very clever, reading, actually, to be able to present mm. your own work, right? You don't yeah. think about that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do an audio book because I'm not an actor. And, and that's a different skill. Mm. But like a 2,000 word snippet. Um, I can hold an audience and mm-hmm. it's very easy not to hold an audience. If you take your book and you sit like this and then you read from your book in a kind of monotone voice mm-hmm. and, and there's things there, then it sounds like you're not excited by what you're doing. Right. And why, why should the people who are listening to you be excited? Right. But, um, and, and there are a couple of easy things you can do stand up if you're going to read because it straightens out your diaphragm. It makes you louder. Um, so that that's, I think that's worth doing, getting confident, and, and even if you need to just 
practice one passage again and again and again until you're really confident with that, it'll really help you if you can just be looking at your audience. Uh, but I don't think there is any particular way. Just just be nice to people. Don't be yeah. awful to people. Because it be and don't lie about who you are. That that's a real like this is silly hair and, and t shirts with certain on. That's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I'm not sort of making it up. I've always been I was this before I was a writer. I'll right. be this when well, hopefully I'll be I'll still be a writer when I'm like eighty. But um this this is who I am. And right. I think people can smell a liar. Um, yeah. Just it's lean true. into what what you are. Yeah. Uh, and people will like you for it. I mean, as long as you're not a murderer or a Nazi, don't, don't. If you're both of those things, then possibly just stay in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so do you have friends that ask you to read your stuff now that you are published? Like other, like people try to like, I don't know, get, uh, use you as a bit of a, <laughs> as a resource in a way that's kind of awkward or anything like that. Does that ever happen? <laughs> no, I, I, I have one friend I read things for, um, occasionally who, who is kit power who is one of the other hosts of the podcast i do um <clears throat> and he's the only person i do it because he knows me yeah and, right and i'm a monster and i just you don't want me to look through your thing because but being i don't know if people know what a skill being an editor is yeah because to be an editor you, you have to take something and you have to make it more that person so yes. my editor takes my stuff and she makes it more me she has to think like me and realize what i'm getting at and so you're not being clear about what you're making here I, i'm not an editor if you give me your story to read i'll like get to the fifth paragraph where you mention a dog and and you'll carry on i'll think well if it was me i'd have written this story about the dog and yeah. that is all i would talk for the rest of it i'm not helpful I'm destructive. No, it's true. Like <laughs> that's just why we tell people this too, because I work more on the edit. I actually work more as an editor than a writer. And I tell a lot mm. of people, I'm like, you will think that other writers are great people to have in your writing group and get feedback from, mm. but often it's the worst because what they'll mm. do is they'll literally just tell you how they would write it. And that's yeah. not, that's not going to benefit you at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's why I, I, it's okay for Kit because he knows that and he can pick out things yeah. that okay okay you did say one thing that was useful rj I'm yeah it's like that. all that other stuff is you and i'm not gonna yeah, do that i'm not yeah. yeah i'm not you uh so i don't i don't tend to and also the, there's you can get yourself in trouble giving people feedback so yeah of if course sent you hurt feelings and things like yeah that. And, and also if somebody you, you do get people who there, there have been instances where somebody's written a book <clears throat> and then somebody says, well, you look at my thing, and they've looked at the thing, and it and it's had a similar idea in it. And then the book oh, right. people said, oh, I, I, I sent them that story. Oh, yeah, of course. As an artist, that would be really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> All right. Well, unfortunately, it's been a it's been a blast, but we are running mm. out of time here. I've I had a great time. Um, I, I'm sure everybody else did. I know it's just sad. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I love doing this. I could have done another hour. I know, right? I, I get to. I like it too. I'm like you. I love mm. people, so it makes it easy for me to do these things mm. as well. Um, so uh, please get involved though with our challenge. Like I said, you can watch last week's live stream. Sign up below. It is our uh, world building challenge. It'll be a lot of fun. I am actually going to be going through at the end, reading them, giving feedback, things like that. Usually why feedback is just, oh, did you think about this? Did you think about this? Did you think about, you know, just to kind of spur the imagination. And we do have a world building workshop. You can see right there. And that's the same kind of thing. What we do is uh, kind of like what RJ say. We're not trying to tell you how to write because we can't really do that. But what we can do is give you things to think about. You know, did you think about from this perspective? And we do some fun exercises. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. it's a lot I did a lovely picture of Daniel as well while I was, while I was sat there. <laughs> Maybe you can see that. It's beautiful. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you can see, see why. I, just know I'm you're always doing something at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, yeah. That's great. Oh, we have everybody had a great time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It's lovely thank to you, say hello everybody. to you. Yes, it was wonderful. Uh, we'll see you around the Auto Creek community. I imagine we'll mm -hmm. have you back sometime, maybe after you release yeah. your new work, because it sounds uh, really cool. Uh, especially because yeah, you're it, like you're never going to predict what's going to happen. I love that. So, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know the title. I was talking to Daniel about this. We don't. We don't know what the title is yet. Oh yes, oh, well, and apparently you have been tasked to write a book with, with the world without air. So there we go. It says that no air. It's, <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll yeah. see everybody around see the Otter Creek community. Bye, everyone.